Brilliant. Okay, so yeah, thank you again, Yolanda, for a, a wonderful talk. I have a, a couple kind of more general questions that um, we're, we're asking all the speakers that we have in the, in the seminar series. So to get started, the first question I've got is basically what got you started in science and eventually led you moving into kind of synthetic biology and biodesign more broadly? Yeah, I guess I had really nice or uh, good science teachers in high school and I kind of was motivated to, to study something in science and then decided to go for biochemistry, molecular biology. And then when I studied, I haven't really heard much of synthetic biology, I guess that was shortly after the field kind of was born. Um, but I heard I had lectures about protein engineering. Um, that was really I was really fascinated by that. And so I decided to do a, a PhD in you know, um, protein engineering by directed evolution in microfluidic um, droplets. In the end, I've done a bit more method development than you know, engineering, but, but still very interesting. And then, and then really synthetic biology took off, right? It was with them emerging field and I want to definitely want to stay there and I then wanted to increase complexity kind of from proteins to to engineering chain regulatory networks right and then that's what I went for my postdoc and that's what we're still doing. <laughs> that's great um, but is, is there so are there certain approaches because when I speak to various people they, they all have sort of their favorite part of a field in a way the thing that they really like enjoy is there a particular area in synthetic biology that that you you've always been kind of in love with in a way, and that's kind of really shaped where you, where you, what you've done, and also where you're probably going to go in the future in some ways? Well, yeah, I mean that the circuits I, I like a lot, and what I also enjoy is kind of the interplay between computational and experimental biology. Mm -hmm. so we typically, you know, most of our projects start with some kind of model that says, okay this circuit topology should be able to do this and this. And then we go to the lab, uh, build it and try to get it actually doing it. And then we, you know, we take, we measure the data and fit that again to a computational model. And then we use the model to predict what other experiments we could do or what behavior you should observe. And, and so I really enjoy this, this fourth and back. Although I don't have much background in computational biology, we usually do this in collaborations, but it's always fun to kind of collaborate with, with computational biologists. Yeah, no, it, I, I, it was evident in your, in your work, there's kind of this kind of merging of the two can kind of answer questions you can't just do with biology, you need to have almost like hypothesis generated from some theory in a way, which is really nice to see. Um, I guess kind of related to that then, what do you feel kind of the, are the biggest hurdles then holding back synthetic biology in a way? Um, is there a particular method that we're missing or is there a particular aspect we're just ignoring or is, is what, what's your feeling in terms of the, the difficulties in pushing the field forward? Hmm. I think one of the big challenging is, challenges now moving from, you know, the proof of principle circuit in the lab that works nicely to robust and reliable systems that we actually could use in, in real world settings for applications. So I think that's still, you know, some work to do. If, if something works in under control condition, that doesn't mean yet it will work inside the body or on a packaging or, or wherever you would like to use it then in the end. So I think still have work to do there. Um, and then in addition, I guess we also need to address regulatory and, and ethical issues to then go forwards and, and use synthetic biology in everyday life. Definitely. And no, I think that's, it's a, yeah, we, we're not going to get, we, people aren't going to buy into it unless they, they believe it's safe or there's not going to be harmful side effects and stuff. So it's really, really important. Um, so I guess looking, looking to the future, if you, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years time, what do you think synthetic biology is going to have done to the world or to our everyday life that, that maybe we wouldn't expect today in some sense? Well, hopefully a lot. Um, I really think it, this technology has the potential for, you know, the next industrial revolution. Um, I, I, you know, it has potential every, 
applications in almost every aspect of our lives. Um, around detect and treat diseases, um, produce fine chemicals, biofuels, smart materials, just a few examples. And I also hope um, we can contribute, you know, to a sustainable society and, and bring up, come up with solutions, you know, to stop climate change and, and environmental degradation. Yeah, no, they're going to be problems we're going to face in our lifetime for sure. And then the last question I've got is, it, do you have any advice for kind of, sort of students starting out in research? Is there anything that you, we've all made mistakes, are there mistakes you wish you hadn't, hadn't made or you wish someone had told you something to sort of help guide you if you get started in, in science and research? Well, I, I, yeah, it's difficult, you know, the CVs are so different. Um, I don't think there's a single advice that applies to everybody. Mm. Um, something that, I find important is that you should choose a lab that you feel comfortable in. You know, there's a nice working environment with a PI who cares about you, not just about your results. Um, that's certainly important. Um, yeah, another thing, I guess it's no, not enough to do great science, but you also need to be able to communicate it, right? Especially as a PI, all what they do is kind of you know, um, give presentations, write papers, write grants. Um, so any any time invested in practicing uh, communicating your presentations or writing, there's well invested time. That's great. I think that's, that's good, very good advice for sure. Um, well, that's all the questions I had. So I just want to thank you again for a really wonderful talk and. Um, I'll, I'll post online some of your, your recent papers on some of the stuff that you were talking about, because um, there's also some beautiful figures in there of the, of the oscillations and the t things turning on and off and the spatial patterns and stuff. So that'll, that'll be really good. good. <laughs> so thanks again. Welcome. <laughs>